Elon Musk is one of the very few people who is not afraid to say what's on his mind, even when it comes down to going against billionaires. Maybe that's why the richest person in the world has just declared war against another billionaire. This time, it stars Elon Musk and Charlie Ergen. Musk has publicly called out the CEO of Dish Network, saying that he is trying to steal the 12 GHz band that rightfully belongs to SpaceX and Space Internet. Here is why it is a big deal. Musk's Starlink was attempting to be designated as an eligible telecommunications carrier under the Communications Act. For specific places where Starlink has received money, it is necessary to provide an internet connection to over 642,000 underserved households and businesses in 35 states. The FCC has recently awarded SpaceX a license for this technology, allowing them to deliver Starlink internet service to moving vehicles. Earth stations in motion are satellites that transmit data while they are in motion, such as ships and airplanes. Dish Network has asked the FCC to deny Starlink the necessary certification. Only a small group of people know why this company would want to do that. However, it was revealed that Dish is constructing a 5G mobile broadband network which would most likely employ the same 12 GHz spectrum that it utilizes to provide satellite TV services. Musk complained about this on Twitter, claiming that Charlie Ergen is attempting to take the 12 GHz spectrum intended for space internet. He also added that the behavior is not nice. Some of Musk's followers inquired if they could help with the matter. The CEO advised them to write to the FCC, emphasizing that their assistance in this way would be wonderful. Later, it was revealed that OneWeb is assisting SpaceX in its battle for the 12 GHz spectrum. This business urged the FCC to reject the request to open up the 12 GHz spectrum for ground-based 5G. But, according to the FCC memo, authorizing a new class of terminals for SpaceX's satellite system will expand the range of broadband capabilities to meet the growing user demands that now require connectivity while on the move, whether driving an RV across the country, transporting a freighter from Europe to a United States port, or while on a domestic or international flight. According to the OneWeb analysis, satellite internet providers would be unable to install user terminals close to a typical urban or suburban macro cell base station deployment without suffering damaging interference. The proponents of multi-channel video and data distribution service 12 GHz for 5G have no experience creating actual networks and are instead focused on pushing the Commission for an unprecedented spectrum windfall based on highly erroneous technical studies with no matching benefit to disconnected Americans. Dish Network has reacted to this allegation, saying that SpaceX is spreading misinformation. According to Dish Network, this is another in-house, non-independent attempt to deny the scientifically proven possibility of coexistence in the 12 GHz band. It is crucial to remember that the FCC has previously said that any non-geostationary satellite orbit fixed satellite service system firm using the 12 GHz spectrum does so at their own risk and should not anticipate exclusivity inside the band. The 5G for 12 GHz coalition continues to engage with the FCC and others to find a win-win solution for the American people. They continue exploring evidence demonstrating cohabitation in the band and enhancing the public interest. SpaceX has petitioned the FCC to block DISH's proposed regulation modifications for the 12 GHz spectrum. If the FCC does not reject these guidelines, Starlink consumers would be subjected to interference more than 77% of the time, and there were complete service interruptions 74% of the time. Most Americans would be unable to use Starlink, a critical emergency aid program. We've all heard about how Starlink is assisting in Ukraine. However, Starlink aided residents in Louisiana when Hurricane Ida knocked out communications and electricity.
Dish Network's chairman Charlie Ergen, Corporate Development EVP Tom Cullen, and External and Legislative Affairs EVP Jeff Bloom met in Washington, D.C. with FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenborsel and other FCC members. They had a lot to discuss, including Dish's 5G build-out progress and the current conflict with satellite companies, including SpaceX and Starlink, over the 12 GHz spectrum. Dish emphasized the advantages of increasing power levels in the citizens' broadband radio service spectrum. Not long ago, the Dish representatives met with more than just Chairwoman Rosenworcel and her team. They also met Commissioners Jeffrey Storks, Brandon Corr, and Nathan Symington, as well as members of their respective teams. Dish said that it has satisfied the government's obligation of providing 5G internet access to 20% of the U.S. population, having done so via the construction of a cloud-native, standalone 5G network. It is constructing the network using Open Radio Access Network standards. The next major network deadline is the 14th of June 2023, when DISH must reach 70% of the population. Access to the 12 GHz spectrum might aid DISH in its ambition to become a credible number 4 wireless rival in the United States. The 12.2-12.7 GHz range has 500 MHz bandwidth suitable for two-way 5G services. DISH utilizes the 12 GHz spectrum to deliver satellite TV service and thinks the band may be shared by direct broadcast satellite, non-geostationary satellite orbit users, and 5G users. However, one of its main competitors, SpaceX, refuses to share the band. SpaceX convinced a large number of individuals, 90,000 in all, to write statements to the FCC about how they depend on the spectrum for Starlink Internet. According to DISH and its 5G for 12 GHz coalition partners, this amounts to a misinformation campaign that is scientifically and logically wrong. It bears emphasizing that the FCC has granted 15,000 MHz of additional spectrum for Starlink service spectrum, by the way, for which Starlink paid nothing, Bloom said at the briefing. The 12 GHz band accounts for just 3% of Starlink's overall spectrum authorization. And when the FCC granted Starlink permission to utilize the 12 GHz frequency, the permit was expressly conditional on the result of this particular 5G regulation. Indeed, the FCC has explicitly warned Starlink that if it deploys in the 12 GHz band, it does so at its own risk and that any investments made toward operations assume the risk that operations may be subject to additional conditions or requirements as a result of any future commission actions. Meanwhile, OneWeb joined SpaceX in opposition to 5G in the 12 GHz range earlier this week, providing its own scientific analysis, demonstrating that 5G will cause severe interference if permitted in the spectrum. Only a few individuals who understand the nature of potential interference and associated concerns seem to be paying attention right now. Rights to utilize frequencies have not been properly defined, says Thomas Hazlitt, a Clemson University economist who writes on bandwidth wars and once served as FCC chief economist. However, the rulings and the market activities that follow have the potential to have a significant societal effect wherever signals from satellite broadcasts or satellite internet connections may one day land. Given the economic worth of frequency rights, there is a sharp difference. Over the previous 30 years, more than 100 bandwidth auctions have garnered the U.S. Treasury around $280 billion. Citizens are unlikely to tune in until more concrete advancements occur, as they did with television, radio, and the railway. Others, though, are paying notice, and the stakes are high. It's total market-driven in the United States, says Shahid Metzander, worldwide director of telecom solutions at Aerospike, a database business. DISH is attempting to expand into new services, just like SpaceX that has launched thousands of extra satellites. Neither wants to be bothered. 
billions of dollars in value might be generated or destroyed, depending on how the FCC chooses. Meanwhile, the FCC's politically selected commissioners are down one member, with the vote divided equally along the party lines. It complicates contentious decisions. More technological variables may potentially have an impact on the spectrum's path. The United States was the first to agree to a spectrum-sharing arrangement in the citizens' broadband radio service frequency in 2018. It is a sophisticated idea that allows diverse groups of users to share a spectrum, creating more significant space. The FCC is under pressure to assign 12 GHz in a fashion that allows for spectrum sharing. This was not the case with the 5G network rollouts in the United States, which became a significant problem this year due to concerns about interference in the C-band between high-speed cell towers and jet altimeters on approach to airports in low-visibility situations. Meanwhile, Starlink aims to expand its satellite system to other locations, including the United Kingdom. Who do you think is going to win this battle between the two billionaires and their multi-billion dollar companies? Also, who do you think is right here? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.